Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the um, Faith Family Church of God Youth Lesson. I'm glad you decided to join us tonight again. Um, tonight, it's gone, the title of the lesson is, What Time Is It? Um, i got a question. Did you get up today? When you woke up, did you take a deep breath and say, <gasps> I'm alive? Or did you just take it for granted that you, you woke up? When you go to bed at night, do you take it for granted that you're going to wake up the next morning? That is life. That is time. Every 24 hours is a day. And every day that passes, um, every night that passes, every day that passes, that's time off of your life. So tonight, the lesson is going to be, where did this all start? How did we start aging? Where, what went wrong? I mean, because it wasn't like this all the time. You know, this, it, God did not intend for this to happen. Okay, let's put it that way. But before I get started, I want to say a word of prayer and ask God to give me the right words, you know, for you to understand, not misunderstand what I'm saying, to make sure I'm saying what I'm supposed to say. Dear Almighty God, thank you for another wonderful day, for taking care of us, providing for us, for protecting us. Lord, I ask that tonight that you again give me the words that you want me to say. Let me, let whoever hears this lesson tonight, let them get what they need to understand that life is not promised. Every day is a, a gift from you. It is another day for them to find salvation if they don't know you, Lord. Lord, ask that you give us mercy and grace in our lives. Be with us tonight. Be with us tomorrow. And bless each one of us. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. So, my props tonight, you're going to probably have a laugh when you see them. But um, they're very unique tonight. If I can get them on the camera here. Okay. First of all, I want you to look at this watch. Give, come on, here we go. Here we go. This watch has a second hand. You don't see very many second hands. You don't see numbers. Now, this one has the little lines, but um, these lines, these little lines represent a number. Um, if you're not used to reading a clock or a watch like this, this can be confusing. Tap it again. Because that red, that red line that's moving like it is, that is a second. A second of life goes by. And once it goes around, one time, like I said, most of you, you younger people, uh, like Sister Brenda said one day um, recently during service, you don't know how to read one of these type of clocks or watches. You're used to the numbers popping up. Well, this second hand right here, when it goes around, it equals a minute. So you have a second go around. I mean, a second. Then it goes all around to the you know, top again. That's one minute. So you've gone through the seconds. You've gone through the minutes. And before you know it, you're into the days. And this calendar, you'll notice I have a July calendar. Let me move up a little bit. Well, July um, is gone. So I'm just going to take my little pen here. I could go by one by one, but I'm just taking my little pen here, and I'm just going to go, July 2022, you're gone. There's nothing I can do. Go back in July and redo. It's done. It's gone. So we turn this, move this one, and we're in August. We're already, we went through Monday 1st, and we're about to end up on the 2nd. And before you know it, all of August, each day, I used to go through my calendars when I was getting ready to, to retire, and I would, I'd circle, okay, here, this is the date I'm retiring. I would look forward to that day. I would go through and I'd mark each day as, you know, I'd be wishing my life away. But I knew I had an expectation of what was going to happen on that day. I was looking forward to that day. Well, before you know it, like I said, you're through August. Do you realize it won't be long? It's going to be Christmas. And before you know it, we're going to be in 2023. All this, time, all this is what I'm trying to say is time is moving fast. And when you look at the, the, the watch, you, know, you don't think anything about it, okay? When you look at the calendar, you don't think anything about it. But before you know it, all this time adds up. Before you know it, you're in decades. You may be maybe 15 right now. Before you know it, you'll be 
you'll be 20. Five years from now, think of that. Five years isn't that long. You'll be 20. My husband, he used to have red hair when we got married. You know, we didn't think about getting old. Nothing about getting old. But look at this hair. This hair, like I said, the, the prop's a little different tonight, unique. This is his hair from now. That is not red. Over a period of time, his hair has gone from red to gray. And, you know, a lot of times you, you younger people don't realize, and, you know, and I know where you come from because I was there too. I never thought of being elderly. I never thought about life passing by. So where, where did all this come from? Where, where and when did time start where we could, we will eventually end back as dust? Or, you know, we're made from dust. God, you know, I'm fixing to tell you the story about Adam and Eve again. You've heard that many times, but I'm going to put a little bit extra into it to explain the life part of it. But, you know, when we pass away, there's no mount, there, or, there is no fountain of youth. There is no medicine. There is nothing that you can do to stop time. And, uh, uh, plastic surgery. Now, see my face? I've got wrinkles. Now, a lot of people, especially ladies and celebrities, they try to hide. Now, like in Robert's, you know, my husband, my Robert, my husband, his case, he doesn't um, fix up his hair like I do mine, okay? But I, I still like it. <laughs> I like his hair. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you look at my face, you know, I've never had plastic surgery, but there's a lot of people out there that they won't to hide their age. And I'm sorry, but no matter how hard they try, they're going to age. People, you know, young people that get these tattoos in odd places especially, those tattoos are going to make a, take a different form when you get older, okay? So there is no way that you can stop aging. So with that being said, I'm going to get into the lesson here. First of all, we know that God created Adam and Eve. <clears throat> and this is the, you know, I'm just using this as an example for the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden Eden um, was beautiful. You know, according to the Bible, the way it's described. And, you know, when I read that, the verse about the God, when God told them not to eat of the fruit, he did not say anything about an apple. I want to make that clear again. I don't know where the apple part came up but you know for the just for the sake of argument since that's what everybody seems to think it was an apple um i asked robert you know to, to, to use a apple orchard and that's what this is apples and all these trees well how do we know that first of all you know, I'm, I'm getting to the story but first of all how do we know that there was not a tree or trees in the garden of eden that had multiple fruits you have a tree that had apples and oranges and peaches and lemons and, you know, whatever kind of fruits you know, there were. There may be fruits we don't even know about. Um, because this, the garden was a special place. It was beautiful. It had, it had plant, and they could eat anything they wanted, anything that they had, they could have, okay? And a matter of fact, the, the garden had, there were actually two trees. You know, we're always talking about the tree of knowledge. That's the one they ate from. But there was another tree in that garden. It was the tree of life. When God told them not to um, eat from this, he said, you can have anything you want, anything in this garden. You, he blessed them. You know, when he formed them, he, before he even brought them to life, he blessed them. Well, he told them they could, they could, they could have anything in the garden. They can, you know, enjoy anything in the garden, whatever. It was beautiful. Except one tree. He didn't see these two trees. And they were close by to each other. And they were planted in the middle of the garden. Well, you know, I don't know about y'all, but when I go to a museum or someplace and, and you know, to, to look at things, you know, observe, whatever, you're always going to usually find a sign that says, do not touch. It may be a car museum or something. You, and these car, old cars, they put signs on their cars that say, do not touch my car. Well, the first thing you want to do is touch it, okay? But, you know, 
in my opinion, the that this was where the choice of of um right and wrong, free will. You know, God pointed that um, tree out to them and told them not to touch it or they would die. Okay, he, now that's nothing. He didn't say you would die of old age. Now, a pastor may correct me if if I'm wrong. The scripture said you will surely die. He did not say by old age. He did not say by an accident. He did not say how you would die. So you could die old. You could die young. And I'm getting this part too about dying young. Um, but you could die. He, they would die if they touched, um, ate the fruit from this tree. Well, <clears throat> with that being said, I'm going to get into my scriptures. And so, I actually, this tree has all this different looking fruit. You know, it's got the pears and the um, apples and the orange. And you'll see all these trees and these animals and all. You know, it gave me the, it gave me the thought that yes, it may have been a tree with various fruits. Because he didn't say, "Do not eat from this apple. Do not eat, eat an apple from this tree." He said, "Do not eat the fruit from this tree." Okay. Now Genesis one twenty-seven through thirty. This is where it gets started, where God created Adam and Eve. So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Wait there, stop there for a second. Now see, this is where God blessed them. He, he, he actually blessed them. You know, he said, multiply, have children, be fruitful, um, fill the earth, have, you know, you be control of the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, you would be leaders, you know, you take care of them, whatever, and everything that lives, moves on the earth, you would be in charge of. They, they, had, they had the opportunity of living more than a golden, wonderful life. I mean, I, I can't imagine being in the Garden of Eden and going to be blessed. But the catch is, like my um, pastor told me, he had not breathed breath into them yet. He had formed them. He was blessing them before he even had breathed the breath into them. Go to the next one now. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, Catch that word life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Now see, let me talk about this a second. <clears throat> everything, not just the trees, but the animals, everything that he had, God had created, he had let, he was given it, to, he was given, uh, he gave Adam charge of everything, to take care of everything, to, 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 Eat the fruit, eat whatever you know, and and the fish, everything. He he was the, he was in charge, okay. And so, when it came time to, you know, breathe breath into them, that's the next chapter. Like I said, they he, he, they're not alive yet per se, but God has just blessed them. Quit, Robert. Genesis two seven. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So see, God blessed them before he had breathed into life into them. Okay, Genesis two fifteen through 18. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that, the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Okay. He did not... Uh, Robert, would you put that last verse up? Back up, please. Be Kenny. Um, he did not say that Eve was going to be you know, a, a slave. She was going to be his helper, but comparable to him. 
but she's going to walk side by side with him, okay? Um, but because he knew God, uh, that Adam, it was not going to be, it was not good for a person to be by themselves. He knew, he said, it's not good for him to be alone. And the thing about this, too, it, it said make him, um, a helper compared to him. Now, he did not say he was going to make another him. I will make him a helper comparable to him. He did not say, let's make another him. You can take that as you want. Okay. Go ahead, Robert. Genesis 2:20 20 through 22. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. So he had gone through all these animals, but he could not find a helper. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Now, why did he do that? Back up a second. Why did he do that? Why didn't he just breathe into, why didn't he, she, he just do Eve like he did Adam? Why did he do it that way? You know, he made them, he, he did that to make them united. You know, Adam knew that God formed Eve from from him, from his rib. He, he took his rib. Go ahead, the next one. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Okay, go ahead, the next one. Okay, then this is where it gets interesting. Remember that God told him, do not touch the, uh, do not eat from the uh, tree of knowledge. He said, then the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. See, they couldn't eat, they couldn't eat it, and they should not, couldn't even touch it. They weren't supposed to even touch that tree, or you would die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then, I, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig, tree, fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Okay. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to me be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Okay. Now that was a long reading, but let me explain something. Um, first of all, the, the tree was the temptation. God had pointed out to them. God, God knew what was going on. He, he knew what had happened. He, he never, I mean, he knew where Adam and Eve was. He knew what had happened. He was giving them a chance to come clean. I, this is what I think. He was giving them a chance to come clean, to ex, you know, take responsibility for it, to say, we, we did this, we, we disobeyed you, God. Um, but they didn't. They started blaming each other. Well, this is when the um, aging, you know, when God, you know, remember God blessed them. But whenever this happened, this is when he, um, he gave the punishment to them. Um, I don't remember if I put that on here, the punishment. I think it was a lot. You need to read, reread the story in Genesis. But um, it was how he was, he punished the, the snake. He punished Adam. And he punished Eve, and not only did he punish them, he put them out of the Eden, uh, out of the Garden of Eden. And not only did he do that, um, this next few verses will explain what else God did after he put them out. Genesis 3:22. Then the Lord God said, "Behold, the man has become like one of us, to 
to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of, garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. But see, the tree of life, he never mentioned to Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of life. All he said was, he said, you can eat from any tree except this one. He, he pointed it out to them. You can eat this one. Well, this last verse says, due to their actions, they were thrown out of the garden, and he put guards around angel, sword, fire, protection for the tree of life to keep it safe, keep people, keep them from um, getting to it. So this is where, you know, I often wonder now, if they had eaten from the tree of life, now this isn't that biblical. You know, my mind does a lot of, turning. If they had, instead of eating from the um, tree of knowledge of good and evil, what if they had eaten from the tree of life? Would that mean they life live forever? Well, due to their sin, their free choice, which God had given them, when he told them about the tree, not to touch it, not to eat from it, he, at that moment, gave them free will. The temptation of Satan was in the snake. The snake, you know, we all know the story. But what makes this story interesting is the fact that we, you know, we have people now, present day, we have people who'll say, oh, I love my life. I am just so happy. I am doing so well. Uh, my life is good. Couldn't be any better. You know, happy, 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 happy people. But then, on the flip side, you have people who say, I'm miserable. I hate life. What, why am I here? I want to die. I want to go and, and kill myself. You know, very, very down on life. Well, like I said, there is no way to stop it unless you do it, you know, yourself, or if you have an accent. You know, we are living through the sinful times that Adam and Eve started the time of life, of, of living, because we're going to all end up in the grave, you know, physically, okay? When you're on the earth, we think about time as a physical time. You know, God wants us to enjoy our lives. He wants us to, to be fruitful, multiply, you know. We are supposed to be witnesses for him while we're here. And that should make you happy. That alone should make you happy, be a witness for Jesus, for the, for, for the Lord. But you have, do have people out there that are not like that. They are, they're looking for truth. They are looking for something to, to make them happy. And they do not know where to start. They don't even know. Um, where it came from. They don't even know why they're here. You know, what am I, what is my purpose? You know, nobody loves me. Nobody wants me around. I just hate my life. I am just miserable. I do not want to be here anymore. You know, that's sad to be that, that miserable. And I want to tell you something. If you are a Christian and you feel that way, something's wrong, okay? If you claim to be a Christian but you don't want to live, um, there is something wrong with your thinking, and it's, it's, it's a, the enemy is attacking you. Or if you don't even know um, about Jesus, okay? So how do you live? The Bible talks about living a long life, too. There is a verse, <clears throat> Exodus twenty twelve. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Now, honor means to regard or treat someone with admiration and respect. To regard or treat with honor. I'll leave that up there a minute. Okay. Would you, what would you think about seeing 
You see your grandparents. Let's we use your grandparents as an example. Grandmother. We'll use me, my grandmother. And you I'm your grandmother and you come in and you just jump all over me. You know, I love you from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, okay? And I love you, but just because something didn't go your way, you cuss me. I'm not I'm I'm just using me now. I'm not I'm not saying this happened, I'm just saying use me as an example. But you, you start cussing me out, you start throwing things, violence, you know. God sees all this. This hurts my heart. He, God does not want me hurt. He does not want my heart to hurt. He wants me to be um, peaceful. He wants me to be happy. He wants you to be peaceful and happy. But when, when you go off the deep end and you start being very disrespectful, whether it's being with words or violence or anything to show disrespect, even if you disagree, disrespect or dishonoring your loved one or any anybody, everybody, but in this case, it's your father and your mother. You should respect them. You, may, you can disagree, but you are supposed to honor them and respect them. Um, and that says, honor them. This is, the, this is the fifth commandment of the Ten Commandments. So you're talking about halfway down. This is a very important uh, commandment. They're all important, but this one ranked on up there in the high, in the high numbers of the ten. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Um, I have used this many, many times. I said, do you not realize if you're ugly like this, you don't know how long you're going to live? You know, you ought to honor your father and your mother. Um, now to the conclusion. We went by the church today, and this is a this was a throw-in. I was sitting there in the in the truck, and I was thinking about this lesson tonight. And Robert was taking care of something, and I saw this stump. This stump really hit me, and the Lord started talking to me. Y'all, you know, I I can you know just like the rocks in the past, some of the craziest things that He puts in my spirit to talk about. This tree um, stump, okay was a tree, okay, a tree stump, of course. Anyway, it started out, it had started out small. These trees started out small, and it, you know, grew and grew, and it was a pretty tree at one time. I know it was. It had to be. And it was a real, you know, a, a place for squirrels and birds. It had life in it. It was living. It was a beautiful tree. But something happened to it. I don't know what happened to the tree. As a matter of fact, I had never noticed the tree until somebody wanted to chop it down. I didn't even know it was there. I didn't, really, I didn't even notice it. But that tree was not taken care of. Either it wasn't taken care of, bugs got in it, um, lightning might have hit it. Something happened to that tree that killed it. Um, that tree made me think about us, our lives. We start off small. You know, we come into this earth as a baby. If you go and look at your, your albums, your pictures, or your phone pictures, whatever, if you will honestly look at those pictures from year, I was showing the calendar and everything, if you look at those pictures from day one, from the time you were born, you didn't stay a baby. You grew up. Um, when we're born, we're born into sin. And until you have the Lord come into your life, you're, you're a sinner, okay? Um, you know, babies is one thing. But when you get to the point where you have free will, where you understand that you have a choice, you know, good or evil, when you know that you can, the Lord needs to be in your heart, okay? You, there's good people that make good choices. But I'm saying you, you have to ask for salvation. But this tree made me think about people who start young and, you know, each day that passes, you get older. Life keeps ticking away. And some people end up like this tree because they didn't make the right choice. Like I said earlier, we're all going to the same place when it comes to dying. 
because you don't have we don't have a fountain of youth. No matter what they say, they don't have a, a magic pill to make you young. We're all bodies are going to die. Our bodies is going to turn back to that dust, like the God made Adam and Eve out of. We're going to return to dust. The important part is, what happens then? When you when you die, when you take that last breath. And I know y'all get tired of me talking about this. Are you going to heaven, or are you going to hell? Okay. Those are, and those are free will choices. You have a choice. God does not send anybody to hell. They choose to go there. Now this tree, it didn't have a choice. Something happened to it. Somebody, if somebody owned this tree, in the neighborhood. They didn't notice it. I did, like I said, I had never noticed this tree until they had a sign up wanting to know whether anyone had a problem with them cutting it down in the neighborhood. But this tree had life in it at one time. Something happened to it. Like I said, I don't know if bugs got to it and killed it. I don't know if lightning struck it or if someone just did not take care of it. Somebody may have owned that tree and didn't ever polish it up, you know, take care of it, watch it, make sure there were no bugs on it. You know, all, that tree is a symbol of how our lives are. We can be gung-ho for the Lord, and we can be happy. Excuse me. We can be happy, and then we let something, maybe a bug or... A, a friend, we just use a friend. We let something hinder us and get our focus off of what our life is for. Because I can assure you, you know, in Jeremiah, you know, God had, he, he knew us before we were even formed, okay? He knew us before we were conceived. He had plans for us before we were conceived. And that's not just for, for us. It's everybody, everybody that, that was born. But what happened between the time they were conceived and born and started growing up was the free will choices got to them. The tree didn't, this dead tree didn't have a choice. It was depending on something else. It was depending on either someone to come and, and weed it, somebody to come and if maybe needed water, it was up, up in those bushes, it might have been fighting for its life. Those bushes were getting all of the water, all of the sunlight, whatever, because the roots couldn't get anything. Um, like I said, you, you think this is crazy, but it's a good example to compare this tree stump. Just a little stump. This stump is left as a reminder of the tree, the tree that used to be there, the tree that used to grow, the tree that had life. Something happened, and that's what happens with people. Some, you know, when when you lose sight, when you lose focus, you do not realize you are playing with your life. You are risking your life, your choice with your life. You, everybody's going to pass away. We're going, we we're getting past that point. Everybody's. That, that's where we're headed. We're going to all die one day, physically, spiritually. It's a choice. Your spirit will not die. Your spirit, your soul, um, I myself, I plan on going to heaven. Now, I choose to go to heaven. And I hope my family, all of my family, chooses to go to heaven. Um, but like I said, all of this is free will. When you think that everything is fine because you're happy, well, that's good. I'm glad you're happy. But what is in your heart is what matters because happiness doesn't get you into heaven either. It's knowing Jesus as your Savior that gets you into heaven. So, I, I had another, the Lord spoke to me about something else. You know, I have never done this, okay? But if you want to know Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I, I'm going to recite the Lord's pray, um, Lord's sinners, the sinner's prayer, okay? Repeat it after me, and I truly, and I'm going to say it with you, with you, I mean, with my heart, 
you know, because I want you saved. I may not know you. You know, you may be somebody that's just watching, but I definitely want my family, and I definitely want my, my church family to say this prayer if you're not saved, because I want you to heaven, and life isn't promised tomorrow. When you, you may not wake up in the morning. I know you say, oh, Marshall, that is just depressing. I'm not trying to be depressing. I'm trying to make you face facts. Facts are facts. I'm trying to get you to hear the truth and quit pushing it. You can't keep lying to yourself. Okay? We are all, every day, every day that ticks away on this watch, every day that passes on this calendar, before you know it, one day turns into a year. The year turns into five years. I mean, time has sped up. I mean, I never realized how quickly I have reached the age that I have reached. So, if nothing else, sort of just humor me. If you cannot do this, you know, on your own, you know, if you want to say, I'll do it myself, don't wait. But I'm inviting you to say this with me, okay? Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily, daily, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord for saving me and for answering my prayer. Now, like I said, I normally don't do that, but for some reason, the Lord dealt with me on that. He said, Marsha, I want you to end this lesson with this, okay? If by chance you need to talk to someone, you need additional prayer, or you want to just connect with us, you are invited to contact, contact me, myself, um, you know, myself, um, Brother Andrew, uh, Sister Brittany, even Pastor Little or Sister Little, you know, we're all here for you. Um, uh, the next screen would show you how you, we can be contacted. But like I said, don't hesitate. I mean, we're our church is located at 3808 Old Brandon Road in Pearl, Mississippi, and we would love to see you there. So. With that being said, I love you all, and you have a good night.